The young boy and his father were fishing by the seaside. Suddenly, a monster attacked the father, swallowing him whole. With the boy's life hanging by a thread, a blazing laser beam suddenly knocked down the monster. As the boy turned around, five figures descended from the sky. Ikaris with eye lasers ride the wave of victory. Under the relentless firepower, the monster began to retreat. Just as the boy was shocked by the scene before him, another monster quietly approached. In the nick of time, Matt Carey used the speed of light to save him. Enraged, the monster launched an attack on the civilians. To protect the civilians, Gilgamesh stepped forward, but his punch seemed to have no effect on the monster, so Thena grabbed a weapon and attacked from the side. With the coordination of the two, the monster was ultimately defeated with a sword through its throat. At that moment, a spaceship belonging to the Eternals descended from the sky. With five more people arriving, the sight shocked the civilians, and they picked up wooden sticks with hostility towards the spaceship. Druig's eyes emitted a golden light as he infiltrated the minds of all the civilians. He erased their memories of everything they had just witnessed, causing the civilians to immediately drop their weapons and stand still. The Eternals warriors gathered together to comfort the young boy who had just lost his father. Cersei picked up the dagger, using her abilities. She transformed it into a golden color and gave it to the boy. And this group of superpowered individuals is none other than the Eternals, who have been protecting the Earth for thousands of years. In order to secretly safeguard the Earth from the threat of mutant races, they have chosen to live in anonymity, blending into various corners of the world. The year is now 2022. Cersei, with her exceptional professional skills, successfully passed the teacher's examination. However, on the first day of class, an unexpected incident occurred. The classroom started shaking violently, and a giant stone statue narrowly missed hitting a student. Cersei quickly intervened, using her hand to block the stone, which instantly transformed into grains of sand. It turns out that her superpower is the ability to alter the shape of any object. While comforting the students, Cersei managed to resolve the crisis. The earthquake came and went swiftly, but the events seemed to suggest something unusual. As expected, by the banks of the River Thames at night, Cersei was taking a stroll with Dane Whitman when a monster slowly emerged from the water. With a glance, Cersei couldn't help but notice that these mutant races were supposed to be extinct. How did they reappear once again? Then, Cersei placed her hands on the ground, causing the floor tiles to transform into soft sand. Seeing the monster sinking into the sand, she lifted her hand and instantly trapped the creature. This bought some time for the others to escape. However, given the vast difference in strength between the two sides, this was merely a temporary measure. The monster quickly pursued them once again. Sprite used their abilities to create multiple illusions, aiming to confuse the creature. However, this effect couldn't last for long. and the monster soon discovered the real sprite. Just as it was about to deal with sprite, a force sent it flying, followed by a powerful laser shot. You're right, it was indeed Superman Ikaris, the most powerful warrior of the Eternals. Cersei saw the situation and rushed up urgently. In an instant, the entire bus turned into red petals, but mutant races have not been dealt with yet. So now is not the romantic time. At this moment, Superman starts to engage in a serious battle. Indeed. He is the strongest force and directly injures the monster, but to their surprise, the monster has evolved the ability to heal itself. What's going on here? The evolved monster seems to have become more intelligent. Seeing the current situation, they can only retreat for now and jump into the water. The monster reappears, indicating that it's time to gather the Eternals together. Cersei can no longer hide it and has to confess the truth about the Eternals to her boyfriend, Gilgamesh, known as the One Punch Man of Korea. However, in front of the ancient giant beast, he becomes powerless and is effortlessly thrown away by the beast. Teammates come to help, and with everyone's combined effort, they easily capture the ancient giant beast. It continues to struggle, but then gets knocked away by Gilgamesh's iron fist. This is ancient Babylon, 2,500 years ago. The Eternals are tirelessly working to eradicate the mutants. After the mutants are eradicated, humans, however, begin to inflict harm based on race. Thanks to the invention of the musket, people killed each other. Whenever Druig tries to control their thoughts and stop the war, he is stopped by the leader. They cannot interfere in human conflicts. The leader, a jack, 
occasionally contacts the heads and reports the situation. Ikaris and Cersei also develop feelings for each other over time. They have been partners for a long time and know each other well. Moreover, they do not age. So love quickly blossoms between them. The two of them enter the realm of marriage. And just then, Athena's eyes suddenly went white and she began to attack the clan. It turns out that Athena has been afflicted with Eternal Madness Syndrome, an incurable condition that makes it difficult to control her during episodes of madness. Many people are no match for her and are severely injured. In the end, it is only through Gilgamesh's powerful punch that she is knocked unconscious. At this point, divisions arise among the group. Druig hopes that humans can lay down their weapons and live in peace. However, others choose to follow the will of the gods and refrain from interfering in human wars. Druig was the first to leave the clan. Gilgamesh decides to take care of Thena, who may go mad at any moment. Others are free to choose their lives. In their recollection, the three of them arrived at a Jack's residence, finding no one inside the house. However, they discovered a Jack's lifeless body in the yard. The mutant race has developed the ability to heal themselves. But a Jack met a gruesome death. It seems that all of this is connected. Cersei unexpectedly obtained a Jack's energy sphere and became the new leader. Cersei was then transported to another time and space. Due to her lack of experience, she quickly retreated. The group continued their search for teammates in India. They found Kingdo, who can shoot energy spears from his fingertips. At this time, Kingo had achieved great fame and success as a Bollywood star, he had no interest in dealing with the mutant race. But in order to make a documentary on the Eternals, he reluctantly agreed to. They boarded Kingo's private plane and set off to find the next teammate. They eventually arrived in Australia and found the strongman Gilgamesh and occasionally mad Thena. When Sprite saw Thena in such a state, she created an illusion to help her regain her memories. Next, the British-style dinner began. Gilgamesh raised his right hand, but transformed into a giant baby, this was followed by everyone teasing and laughing at him. Gilgamesh helplessly looked at his appearance, Sprite waved her hand, and Gilgamesh finally returned to normal. Everyone was having a great time, but Cersei had a furrowed brow. Later, she attempted to awaken the energy sphere, and this time, she succeeded. Athena revealed to Cersei the true purpose of the Eternals. Every billion years, a new celestial being is born. Therefore, Athena would send the next generation in advance to various planets. The Earth has been used as a place for this generation of baby sky gods to live. The mutants will interfere with the god of heaven baby to draw energy. So the Eternals were sent to eliminate them. Currently, the Earth is saturated with power, and humans are abundant, allowing the new celestial to emerge. However, the cost is the annihilation of the entire Earth. What surprises Cersei even more is that both the Eternals and Mutants are puppets created by the Celestials. However, when Mutants caused problems on Earth, the Celestials created the Eternals to counterbalance them. In conclusion, everyone is just a tool. Then, they arrived in the Amazon rainforest, found also Toolman Druig. After knowing the truth, Druig froze, seeing the already disheartened Druig. Cersei plans to take her teammates and leave. At that moment, Ikaris was attacked by the mutants and was grabbed by a giant beast, soaring into the sky. Ikaris immediately cast a laser eye to counterattack, and soon took out a giant beast. Before catching their breath, Ikaris was attacked again. This is a giant beast is very smart. It used its tentacles to firmly restrain Ikaris and then lunged at him. Gilgamesh rushed forward to support them upon seeing the situation. With a powerful strike, he sent the beast flying, initiating another intense battle. As the beast was nearing defeat, an unexpected incident occurred. Thena's old condition flared up, causing her eyes to turn white. Gilgamesh punched the beast, sending it flying, and quickly rushed to stop Thena. The situation temporarily eased. The giant beast immediately noticed something wrong with Thena. It turned and pounced towards Thena, and in his effort to save her, Gilgamesh neglected his own safety. In an instant, he was impaled by the beast and rendered immobile. The behemoth began to absorb Gilgamesh's energy, which eventually led to the end of Gilgamesh's life. After absorbing the Eternal's powers, the behemoth surprisingly transformed into a human-like form. Not only could it speak, but it also possessed high intelligence and human memories. However, its greed led to a fierce confrontation with Thena. Thena continuously changed her weapons, switching between a long spear and a heavy axe. 
forcing them to repeatedly retreat. The beast mimicked Gilgamesh's voice, and Thena fell for the trick. The beast ensnared her with its tentacles and injected a needle into her neck, absorbing her energy. Thena woke up at this moment, holding a knife in one hand and a sword in the other. She could only hear the giant beast splitting into several pieces. It probably didn't expect to meet such a demise. A few days ago, time was tight and the tasks were heavy. Cersei quickly arrived in Chicago and found Fastos. Finally, the Eternals arrived together in Iraq and found her previous spaceship. They also met Mac Carey, who had been living on the ship. Now we are all together, ready to fight against the gods and protect the Earth. Fastos was the first to propose a plan. He was going to create a pair of bracelets that would put everyone's energy into Druig. Let him perform the feat of hypnotizing the baby god of heaven. At this moment, different voices appeared, with Ikaris being the first to oppose. As his memories returned, the truth about Ajak's death gradually surfaced. Ajak, as the former leader, had already revealed the truth to Ikaris. Surprisingly, Icarus is unconcerned about the fate of the Earth and focuses only on carrying out the tasks assigned by the celestial beings. Thus, a conspiracy began. He lured a jack to an oil company in Alaska, only to discover that beneath the mountains were mutants. Without hesitation, Ikaris pushed a jack down. He will never allow them to betray the God of Heaven, Ali. Back to the present, the God of Heaven baby is about to arrive. Everyone was making all the necessary preparations. Mac Carey relied on a pair of flying legs to run around the Earth to find the location of the appearance of the Gods of Heave. Now, the Ikaris put on their battle dress and officially turned against each other, came up and broke the bracelet invented by Fastos. Even Sprite, who had secretly admired Ikaris for years, joined his betrayal. Fastos discovered that Cersei's energy sphere could absorb abilities, prompting him to restart the bracelet project. The next day, the Eternal Race people changed into their battle suits and began to carry out the plan of the sleeping Heavenly God. Ikaris caught sight of the spaceship as well. Ikaris broke into the spacecraft and entered the cabin, only to find Thena alone inside. Thus, the battle between Thena and Ikaris commenced. <laughs> Athena, unaffected by the illness, exhibited formidable fighting skills. However, it was all part of a strategy to divert attention. On the other side, the plan to transfer abilities among the group was in progress, but just as success seemed within reach, Ikaris rushed in, turned on the storm mode. One pair of laser eyes not only sent Druig flying, but also destroyed the spaceship. <laughs> Mac Carey rescued Fastos and started to fight with Ikaris. Just then, the volcano started erupting. The team once again implemented their rescue plan. The others held off Ikaris, while Cersei went alone to the mouth of the volcano. In the midst of the chaotic battle between the team and Ikaris, the mutated race's giant beasts joined the fight. Fastos showcased their abilities, using the power of technology to control Ikaris, with Ikaris immobilized. His laser eyes couldn't reach beyond 10 meters. On the other hand, Cersei was deceived by Sprite's illusion. They suffered a surprise attack from behind, but luckily Druig arrived in time to control Sprite. At this time, the baby god of heaven is about to break out of its shell. Just as Cersei zoomed in and used the freezing beam to control the baby Tengen, Ikaris broke free from his restraints and appeared before Cersei, faced with their once eternal love. He couldn't bring himself to harm her. In the end, Cersei unleashed an extremely cold curse, instantly lifting everyone into the air and transferring their powers to her. Harnessing the collective strength of the team, the freezing speed became incredibly fast. Soon, one of the hands and head of the baby god of heaven broke through the ground and was quickly frozen. The gods were finally stopped, and the Eternals successfully protected the Earth. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.